Hello and welcome back to another episode of Deep Cuts, a show that examines lore, backstories, and theories in video games. I consider Resident Evil Remake one of the greatest horror games of all time, possibly even the greatest. It came a mere six years after the release of the original, and completely retooled every part of the game, and even added new areas, enemies, and expanded on the story. But perhaps the greatest addition to the game was none other than Lisa Trevor. Lisa Trevor has since become a fan favorite, and for good reason, she's terrifying. But what makes her so great isn't just the fact that she's terrifying, it's that it's it's hard not to be sympathetic for her. She's not inherently evil. In fact, she's a victim. And she's far more tied to the roots of the entire Resident Evil story arc than you might know. But to get there, we first need to talk about who she is, and more so who her parents are. Lisa Trevor was born in 1953 to George and Jessica Trevor. Lisa's father, George Trevor, was a well-known architect, most famous for gimmicks like creating secret halls and rooms and even booby traps in the buildings he designed. This caught the attention of Dr. Oswell E. Spencer, a British virologist and eugenicist, co-founder of Umbrella Pharmaceuticals, and is overall a really bad dude. By 1962, George Trevor was officially contracted to build a private mansion in the Arclay Mountains near Raccoon City. It was an enticing project for George because he was offered unlimited funding. Although Oswell E. Spencer wanted the residence to be based off of his European home, it was George Trevor who designed many of the trademark traps and secrets of the estate. So you can blame him next time you need to open the door to the bedroom, but first need to retrieve the key that's engraved in the book that's locked in a tomb in the graveyard that's only opened by a green arrowhead in the upstairs western hallway. In 1967, once the construction was complete, George Trevor and his family were invited for a stay at the new Spencer estate. Being caught up with work, George sent his wife and daughter a few days earlier, a decision that he would end up regretting. Upon arriving at the Spencer estate, Jessica Trevor and 14-year-old Lisa Trevor were abducted by men in white and taken to an underground research facility under the mansion. Wasting almost no time at all, they became subjects of experimentation and injected with a progenitor virus. George Trevor would arrive at the Spencer estate just a few days later. When asking about the whereabouts of his family, he was informed that they had left to be with a relative that had fallen ill. After several days at the mansion, George Trevor had become suspicious, not just of the truth about his family, but also about the mansion itself. It seemed things were not quite right. Not everything was true to his design. One of the most notable incidents came when George noticed a deep hole behind the artificial waterfall in the courtyard, at which point he was escorted away by men in white coats. On November 20th, George made it known that he was leaving, although in actuality, George Trevor would never leave the estate again. George too was abducted, drugged, and held captive for three days in a room in the mansion. He made an attempt to escape, starving and delusional from the drugs. George had difficulty navigating through the mansion even though he designed it. In the process, he was horrified to find a shoe belonging to his wife Jessica. After running from the guards, George was forced to jump into a secret pit that led to an underground tunnel. However, the passageway was blocked and George, now trapped, was left to eventually starve to death in the dark. Oswald E. Spencer knew that he needed to silence the Trevor family to prevent any secrets about the mansion getting released to the public, and conveniently, he would also be getting test subjects at the same time. Both Jessica and Lisa Trevor were held captive separately, and were both injected with the progenitor virus. Jessica was injected with type A, while Lisa was injected with the type B variation. Jessica's body was able to resist the virus, and she displayed no form of mutation. Useless to the Umbrella Corporation, she was then disposed of. However, this was not the case with Lisa. She began to mutate, and over the course of several days her mind began to degrade and her physical form would become grotesquely altered. Lisa was placed under protective observation, and she would serve as a test subject for many years. Unlike many of the other unfortunate test subjects, Lisa was able to survive all of the Umbrella Corporation's tests attracting the attention of many higher-up Umbrella researchers, such as William Birkin and Albert Wesker. Birkin and Wesker would use Lisa's unique resilience to test out the nemesis parasite, which they injected into Lisa. To their amazement, Lisa's heavily mutated body was able to overcome the parasite and actually absorb it and adapt its powers into her system. The results were a major leap forward for their research that would ultimately play a pivotal role in the engineering of the G-Virus, 
which would eventually be extracted from her body. The creation of the G-Virus was key, and would set into motion some of the major events in the Resident Evil series. After years of biological experimentation well into adulthood, Lisa grew more and more violent. One thing she would remain fixated on for the entirety of her life was to be reunited with her mother. In an attempt to satiate their test subject, Umbrella sent in a look-alike of Jessica Trevor to act as her mother. But Lisa would not be fooled. Despite the appearance, Lisa did not recognize her scent, and she killed the imposter, and ripped off her face thinking that she had stolen it. Lisa kept the face for safekeeping, attached to her own body thinking she would one day return it to its rightful owner. On another occasion, Lisa brutally killed three Umbrella researchers. Now seen as a threat and with the creation of the G-Virus complete, Umbrella no longer needed Lisa Trevor and ordered for her termination. Even though her body had been rendered nearly impervious to gunfire after years and years of mutation, Lisa was supposedly slain in an undisclosed location on the Spencer estate. Despite her death being confirmed after three days of monitoring her vital signs, Lisa was able to regain life, and she would live on to lurk the grounds and catacombs of the Spencer estate. Eventually, in 1998, 31 years after she had been originally abducted by Umbrella, Lisa Trevor would encounter the members of STARS in the events of the first Resident Evil, where her tragic journey would finally come to an end. Mother! You know, probably. Probably came to an end, right? Thanks for watching another episode of Deep Cuts. Uh, let me know what you thought of this episode in the comments, and uh, be sure to check out my other content, and definitely check out my podcast. Peace out. Oh, Who would yeah. play Ben? Oh, <laughs> fucking Dan Danny Michael Trejo. Ben. Like <laughs> 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 we know, like, the only two, like, let's see an actress. <laughs> We're terrible. <laughs> Michael um. Pena. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh the, like Ant Man, Michael Peña. Yes. <laughs> no, you're being Luis Guzman. Luis Guzman.